Now that we have all the tools needed for our device maintenance, we need to get a clear idea about the basic electronic components. First, we are going to start with passive devices. Passive means devices or components which do not require external source to their operation. The first one in this list is resistors. As you can see in this image, this is how a resistor looks like and it usually comes with color bands. A resistor is a two-terminal passive component that opposes the flow of current, which means that it reduces the electric current passing through it, and at the same time lowers the voltage levels in a circuit. This component is covered in details in the practical section of this course. The second component is capacitor. This is the physical layout of a capacitor. It's a two-terminal passive component, as you can see it has two legs, that is used to store energy. It can be used in a circuit as a smoothing, coupling, and bypass component. Usually, this type of capacitor is called polarized capacitor. It has polarity. And as you can see, this sign and the gray area indicates that this is the negative terminal. And this is the positive terminal. Now, if there is no gray area, you can identify the negative terminal. It's the shortest among these two terminals. And another type is the ceramic capacitor. It comes without polarity and it's like a circle. Again, this component is covered in depth in the practical section of, at the end of this course. Now, the third component is inductor. As you can see, this is an inductor. It's a two terminal, it has two terminals, passive component that store energy in the form of magnetic field. It is used in circuits as a choke and reactor in RF receiver and transmitter circuits. Now let's talk about the active devices. Active devices are devices or components which require external source to their operation. The first one in our list is the diode. A diode is a two-terminal PN junction device that allows the flow of current only in one direction. It may come in many shapes. As you can see, this is the original shape. It has a gray line here indicating that this is the negative terminal and this is the positive terminal. The positive terminal is called anode as in this schematic and the negative terminal is called cathode. This is called a rectifier diode. The third most common one is the LED or light emitting diode. This is the symbol for the LED. It's the same as this symbol but has two arrows going out of this diode which means that this will emit light and light will get out of this diode once current passes through it. Calculators display TV mobile phone displays, and any indicator circuit uses LED to indicate a specific state, just like turn on and turn off. So, these are the three shapes, and they are very common components in any electronic circuit. So, each circuit has at least one diode and one LED. Next, we are going to cover transistors and it's also a very common component in electronic circuits thanks for watching keep in mind that these are the three physical shapes for rectifier diode zener diode and led which are basically three different shapes of diode now to the second element in our electrical and electronic components it's also an active element it's called a transistor Transistor is a three-terminal active component that is used mainly in boosting or amplifying electrical signals. Both 
AF and RF ranges. Other application of transistor includes using it as a switch or amplifier for amplifying voltage or current signals. Now, as you can see, this is the physical shape for transistor and high power, high current and voltage transistors comes in this shape. This one is called a BGT transistor or pipe polar junction transistor. It's for current control devices and it comes in NPN or PNB types. Its main function is voltage regulation, audio frequency amplification. And this is the symbol for that type of transistor and this is the physical layout. The second most common type is field effect transistor or in short it's called FIT. It's for voltage control devices and it comes in two types, N-channel and P-channel. This is the electrical symbol and this is the physical layout. It's basically used in audio and radio frequency amplification and in USB or universal voltage uh, AC to DC or DC to AC circuits and it's very common component as well. These two elements are very important and you need to know the main working principle for each of them in order to be able to identify if there is any fault in them. We did cover this in the practical section at the end of this course. So if you don't already know what is a transistor or how it works, you can hit there and see for yourself how to test a transistor, how uh, to check if that, tra that transistor is working or not, and how different types of transistors work. Again, there is two main types, PGT and FET. The PGT or for, is for current control devices. The FET is for voltage control devices. And these are the rest of information that you need. Basically, it consists of collector, base, and emitter. This one has a gate, drain, and source. Thanks for watching this lesson. Next, we are going to talk about some of the common electronic and electrical components but that's it for this lesson if you have any question hello and welcome in this lesson we are going to cover some of the most common components in electronic and electrical applications the first one is the fuse as you can see the fuse is a device that limits the amount of current that can be drawn by an electric circuit by opening or blowing or melting when the current exceeds a preset limit. As you can see, it usually comes in this shape. It has two metal pieces and in the middle there is a plastic or glass piece and there is usually a thin copper wire between these two pieces. That copper wire will blow in or melt when it faces high current than it can handle. This is the symbol for that element and it's one of the most commonly used elements in the input circuit in any device, especially in power circuits. Next is the bulb. Bulb is a very common item. It serves as the load. It turns the electrical energy into light and you might have one in your room right now. This is how it looks and now we have LED bulbs. They don't have, this is a tungsten lamp that consumes a lot of energy to convert a current or electricity into light. Now we have LED, it's more uh, power efficient and it doesn't have helium or gas inside it. This is the electric symbol. Then we have the power cord or plug. Usually this will have a line, a neutral and an earth terminal. And as you can see here we have a fuse on the line terminal to make sure that you are protecting the device from high currents. And that cord or plug will have an insulation. So it's basically a cable. 
This is the insulation material and here we have three cables or three wires line earth and the neutral they are placed depending on each of them uh, depending on the name and they comes in different colors usually brown uh, blue and yellow for earth as you can see brown yellow and blue and they are used everywhere any of your devices if you want to connect it to electricity or to a plug you need to use that power cord or plug to connect it so it's used for temporarily connects an appliance or an equipment to the mains electricity supply via wall circuit or an extension cord next we have switches this is how a physical switch will look like and this is the electrical symbol these are necessary to turn the electrical circuit on or off and we have the connecting wires they comes in many shapes and in circuits if you have a dot between two wires this means that these two wires are connected if you have this sign this means that these two wires are not connected and wires are usually used to create a complete circuit path through which current flow from the source going to the circuit load now what about transformers this is how transformer look and this is the electrical symbol transformers are used for protection of appliance and equipment connected to AC power supplies it can change the electrical voltage or current from one level to another so let's say that we have a device that works on 12 volt and we are getting 220 volt from the power socket a transformer is the device that is going to step down the voltage from 220 to 12 volts so this is what it does these are the main components in any electric and electronic circuits and this is it now what you need to do next is know how to test each of these components this is the thing that we are going to cover in the next lesson now let's talk about bulb or lamp the physical appearance of busted or burnt out bulb is like this if it is a tungsten bulb you can see that there is a wire broken inside it this broken wire means that this lamp is no longer working if you have another type of lamp and you want to know if it is working or not you can simply hook it up to the power and see for yourself if it is working or not this is a 12 volt lamp as you can see so if you have connected 12 volts to its terminal and if it did light this means that it's working otherwise it's not or in some cases you can use the continuity test in your digital multimeter the busted bulb will give you infinite resistance which means that it's open and there is no continuity while the good bulb will give you low resistance but not zero and in most cases it will give you a beep or buzzer when you are trying this with the continuous test or continuous function in your digital multimeter just like the one that we explained in the previous lesson now if it is connected it will give you a beep if it's not it won't give you anything or if you use the uh, resistance uh, measurement test it will give you a very low result. Hello and welcome to this new lesson in which we are going to cover switch testing. A switch is basically an element that allows current to flow to continue or to connect a circuit elements together. Now it comes in different shapes as you can see in this image and if you want to test it using a multimeter using the continuity test on switch means that the multimeter will beep when you are connecting your uh, probes of the multimeter to the two terminals of the switch if you are connecting them 
and you switch off your switch, it will not beep. This way, you know that your switch is working just fine. Now, if it does beep in both way, in the on state and off state, it means that there is a problem with that switch. And if it does not beep at all, even if it was on, it means that it's not working properly. So it's very easy, very straightforward, very similar to the fuse testing. So hello and welcome. Now let's talk about how to test a transformer. As you can see, transformer comes in different shapes, but they all follow the very same simple principle. Transformers are wires that have resistance. So no matter how many terminals there is, if there is a resistance between each two pins, depending on the type of transformer, it means that the transformer is working. Now, depending on how high or low this transistor is, you can identify the primary and secondary coils, or you can identify that a coil is burned out. Now, the first step is meter indication for testing a good transformer. The primary winding and secondary winding can be tested in the meter. This means that our transformer is shorted. Now, if no meter deflection indicating infinite resistance, so if the resistance went very, very high to the maximum at the analog multimeter or the highest or infinite value in the digital multimeter, this means that there is a cut in our transformer winding. So, how do you know which are the terminals for primary and secondary? Usually by copying the transformer name or number and finding this number and looking up on Google for the datasheet for that specific transformer, you can easily identify these numbered terminals and know which are for the primary and which are for the secondary. Now, next we are going to cover the resistor, but for now what I need you to know is that every transformer has a different type of test, but all depends on a very basic truth which is a transformer is basically a wire that has a resistance. So if the resistance is too high, this means that this is a primary winding. And if it is too low, this means that it is a secondary winding. If it is zero resistance, this means that the, that specific winding is shorted. If it is infinite resistance or infinite resistance, it means that this winding is open. So, this is the overall. Usually what I do is look up the transformer online to know the terminals and label them with numbers or letters. Then start the test by identifying the primary and the secondary. Then uh, move on to test if there is a shorted or open uh, winding inside that transformer. I will add more resources on how to test a transformer to this section, but that's it for now. Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we are going to talk about resistors and how you can identify if a resistor is in good shape or if it is broken. Now, if it is a good resistor, the measured value must be within the range of the rated value. The measured value using an ohm meter or a multimeter, the measured value using an ohm meter or a multimeter is a way to determine the resistor value in a circuit. Another way is using the color band. So we can determine the resistance of the resistor using the resistor color coding. As you can see, each of these colors indicate something. So if the color came in the first digit, as you can see, for in a four band resistor, one, two, three, four, or in a five band resistor, each color means something. If it black was the first digit, this means that the first value is zero. If black is the second digit, then this means that the second value is zero. Same for third, and here we have a multiplier and tolerance. So let's say that we have this resistor. Yellow means number four. So 
we can write for up here as you can see here the second color is purple it has number seven so we are going to write seven here and you need to match it with the digital multimeter value if these two are the same it means that the resistor is working just fine otherwise means that you have a problem and you need to fix that problem now one thing that you need to know is that you can't measure the resistance using as a digital multimeter uh, while the resistor is still on board so you have to disassemble or desolder one of the two terminals of that resistor so that you can measure it correctly because sometimes when you measure it while it's still on board you might end up measuring it with other components connected to it parallel or serial so this will cause a reading error and to avoid this we usually recommend desoldering one of these two terminals and removing them from the board and then you can test it or measure it using your digital multimeter now in order to cover this in more details these are some examples for a physical appearance of bad effective or defective resistor now as you can see this is how a resistor look when it is burned out completely this is a slight burnout but you, you can still recognize the coloring here you can't recognize anything so if you saw a resistor that looks like this in a board this, this means that this resistor is broken and you have to replace it so in order to measure a resistor using or test a resistor using a digital multimeter you might end up with three results open shorted or change value open meter deflection indicates infinite resistance reading this means that th that resistor is broken entirely and these two terminals are no longer connected together shorted meter deflection indicates zero resistance reading this means that this resistor is now like a wire connected and it doesn't have any value it's just zero resistance so it's like shorting two terminals a positive and negative and connecting them directly together now the third but rarely happen incident is change the resist change in a resistance value rare defect of resistor measured value is not within the range of the rated value so if it is a 10 kilo ohm resistor you might measure it and read 5 kilo ohm resistor this is not a very common case usually it's either open or shorted but it might happen it's very rare but it might happen so you need to know that it's there you need to make sure that before testing a resistance you desolder one of these two terminals from the circuit or you can desolder the whole resistance and test it outside then brought it back or resolder it to the board